Hi, this is Nick Dawson, the editor-in-chief of TalkHouse Film, and you're listening to the TalkHouse Film Podcast. This latest episode of the podcast is the first in a new partnership between the TalkHouse and Soho House, with whom we are teaming up to curate a regular series of special advance screenings of upcoming movies, followed by a conversation between the director and another filmmaker. The conversation you're about to hear took place at Soho House, West Hollywood, after a showing of Robert Eggers' The Witch. Bought by A24 at last year's Sundance, where it won countless fans and the directing award, the film is finally being released, giving a so far unexceptional 2016 a real shot in the arm. It could be called a horror film, a period movie, a family drama, and a supernatural mystery, and The Witch is indeed all those things, but it also defies simple genre classification. It's a witch story about a family of Puritan settlers in 17th century New England, a folktale wrought with loving care and an eye to both historical and emotional authenticity. It creates a world that feels new to us and then draws us into the darkest corners of that world. Robert Eggers seems to have come out of nowhere with The Witch, his first feature, maybe because he cut his teeth working in theatre rather than film. Stuart Gordon, who spoke with him at Soho House, also has a theatre background and is a director of horror movies, as well as other very different films, such as adaptations of work by Ray Bradbury and David Mamet. Gordon, a talk house contributor since the launch of the film vertical, loved The Witch, and has a great discussion with Eggers about everything from the influence of Kubrick, Polanski and the silent classic Hexen, to the challenges of the witches shoot in Northern Ontario, the process of casting witches, and the need for a Ken Loach time machine to the 17th century. Near the end, there was the added bonus of the three main cast members, Ralph Einson, Kate Dickey and Anya Taylor-Joy, spontaneously coming on stage. One of the pleasures of live events. You never quite know what's going to happen. What an amazing movie, huh? Did you like it? Well, you have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I saw it last night, and I had to see it again tonight. I, it, um, it gave my, my wife wouldn't come this evening because it gave her nightmares. Um, it is a really, really amazing movie, I think. Um, beautifully made. Um, and uh, I think it's one of the great witch movies of all time, really. Very kind. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, what made you decide to make this? Uh, well, I had, um, you know, finally made a short film that wasn't completely terrible. And uh, there were some people who were interested in developing uh, a feature. And uh, I was writing various screenplays that were just v very, very strange and too dark and too genreless, and no one wanted to make them. Uh, and I sort of realized that in the climate, it, it seemed that the, the best way I was going to be able to make a, get a film actually made is if it was in a genre. Uh, so um, I was trying to under figure out how I could do a genre film that would be very personal to me and something that. I wasn't going to be uh, like compromising who I was. And I grew up in New England, and New England's past has always been part of my consciousness. Uh, if you've been to a small New England town, you, you know, a rural New England town, you can see that the past is all over the place, and the woods behind my house seem haunted by the past. And uh, my um, earliest dreams are nightmares about witches and uh, I had witch nightmares in, in, into adulthood and uh, you know so I thought I'd make an archetypal New England horror story with the archetypal New England spook that's you know that, that was the idea it it, it really is um, I mean it really captures the mood and, and everything you know the the period the look of the picture the music, I mean, everything just works to, so well together. Um, Thanks. <laughs> and, um, and you build this very sort of cr creepy sense of dread, you know, that, that just kind of it's, it envelops you. You feel almost that you've been bewitched when you're watching this movie. Um, That's good. <laughs> <laughs> were, were there um, other films that influenced you? Um, I, I, you know, uh, this film was very, uh, very researched and, and, uh, and it certainly in the story, um, itself, I was trying to stick to my source material from the 17th century. Uh, you know, um, 
I will talk about movies, <laughs> but yeah. but that was like something I was really thinking about. And, and you know, what was really interesting is that uh, the you know the re the real accounts of witchcraft and and also the folk tales and the fairy tales, you know, were were really the same. Uh, and uh, and I can I'll talk about that later. But um, but you know, so so it's like what are what are what are the tropes in all of these accounts? Like those the ones that always happen, they have to be in the story. Uh, what are the ones that speak most personally to me? Those have to be there. And then what are the strange, uh, exotic things that are kind of half forgotten? Like, for example, the hair, like the H-A-R-E, hair. Hairs aren't in American mythology, really, but in European mythology, it's like a, a big deal. So that, that that kind of stuff definitely needs to be there. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I like Bergman and Dreyer and the kind of, like, canon of like you know great european art house cinema that is snobby and whatever um but like you know the shining um is a film that in my early mid 20s i was watched countless times to try to dissect and figure out what made it tick and i think sort of embarrassingly this film smells a lot like the shining uh but uh i don't think it would work as well without it <laughs> I, I i think though it creates its own mood it, it um I mean, uh, you know, the, the movies that come to my mind are movies like Rosemary's Baby, you know, which um, one of the, you know, I think is, is another great you know, witchy, oh, yeah. witchy movie. Mm -hmm. um, and when I was, you know, before I started making films, um, I never went to film school. I, uh, You're here. I, I saw um, my producer sat me down and made me watch all of the horror movies that had been sort of made around, the, this was in the mid 80s. And one of them was Rosemary's Baby. And... That movie just absolutely knocked my socks off, and I was uh, amazed at how he shot it. And it ended up that that I always say that that movie is my film school. I ended up watching it dozens of times, and um, you know, it it uh, there are parts of this movie that that really remind me so much of that. You know, the ending of this film, uh, especially. I, I like Polanski, uh, but it, he certainly wasn't like. He wasn't big on my in my mind with this, but uh, you know, well, Craig Lathrop, the production designer who you've also worked with, he he kept saying like, "This is Polanski, <coughs> this is Polanski." So, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so that that definitely and and and, and one of my close friends who art directed the reshoots felt the same. So it's definitely there. Another actually a, a film, a witch film that was. It, very influential is uh, is the silent film Hex Hexen. Hexen, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the witches in that film look close to to my witch, and and also in in that film, like even though some of it is kind of hokey by today's standards, because it's a silent film, because like you 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 don't like hear everything, uh, you have to use your imagination to finish it, and it, it could be quite effective. And and there all are, are these moments in this film where there's no diegetic sound uh and and i and i think some of that comes from my my love of of silent films and and uh and, and yeah and, and yeah um just out of curiosity I've, uh, how many here have seen hex and it's a it's a pretty obscure movie it's um i think it was made in the 20s 1924 i think um yeah. and it it was just on television on turner classics uh, about a about a, two or three weeks ago and it was on like uh, you know i think it started like around it's a long movie it's like three hours long yeah it's really long <laughs> and and it's got all and it's all about witchcraft and it's got all of these scenes in it of you know witches sabbaths and with all these naked witches writhing around or you know it's very much like your, your the ending of your movie here uh and you know with all these old hags that are you know um becoming witches and and so forth. Um, that's one of the things I wanted to ask you about was how you found your witch. Yeah, uh, I, <clears throat> I mean, we we were basically, uh, you know, auditioning old women who looked like archetypal, like archetypal Goya esque witches uh, who uh, were willing to take their teeth out and be <laughs> naked. Uh, <laughs> you know, we had a, a big lighting test with our witch. Uh, she had, I, I don't, it doesn't appear quite as dramatic as I would like, but she had very severe, severe scoliosis. Uh, and we were just trying to like figure out how we could, with a single source that was authentic to like her hovel, how we could really light her effectively. 
I um, I've done three movies about witches. Yeah. And one of the things I've discovered is that um, when you get actors in, or actresses in a room and tell them that they, you want them to be a witch, it, it's one of the most amazing things you'll ever see. It's like they become incredibly liberated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they suddenly just become, you know, they go from being these very polite, proper people to becoming these <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, and just screechy, weird, you know. I mean, it's like all this witchiness. You know, it's almost like women, I'm generalizing here, have that inner witch with, you know, that's just been dying to get out, you know. Um, and and when, it, you know, when it does, it's like, holy shit. I mean, it, <laughs> incredible. Um, but I also, I mean, the other thing I have to say is that this, the acting in this movie is so spectacular. It, it, it's, um, and I think, you know, you've got, you know, there are people that I, whose work I'm not familiar with that I think just hit it out of the park. I mean, every single one of them. Yeah, I mean, I was really, really fortunate. It took, it took, you know, four years to, like, research and write and, all, and find financing. You know, I, like, the, the longer it took to find financing, the more time I had to research. Uh, and I and I just I didn't want to make the film if I couldn't make it uh, in a way that could really transport audiences back to the 17th century, uh, and if, if I couldn't you know build the 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 uh, farmstead out of the correct materials and the clothing the, the correct way, uh, and use actors from the UK, I, I didn't want to do it, so I kept waiting. But finally, we, we, we I found investors who really got my vision and, and, and trust me to do what I wanted to do, and they let me cast whoever I wanted. Uh, I think if we were in a situation with you know, maybe an inappropriate star uh, that we were like, you know, please, please help our little movie be seen. Uh, we we could have been in trouble, but but the but but uh, yeah, I got to cast re really excellent actors and also really um, good people. I was looking for people who were good, good people because the shoot was very difficult, very remote, um, and not cushy. But also because we were going to be going into such like dark places psychologically, I needed people who were going to really. Um, support each other and, and 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 help each other get out of that stuff. Did you see? So did you cast it in in Great Britain? Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, I think you know, I it, potentially we could have found you know the adults uh, elsewhere, but um, but it was really important to me that the kids, the young kids, were using um, their own accents uh, and um, other it just because like you know it, as sort of precise and stylized as the cinematic language and camera work was the acting needed to be sort of, you know, Ken Loach time machine into the 17th century or as close as we could get. Yeah. Yeah. You really, you really feel that. Um, how did you find your, your, your lead actress? Um, I mean, you know, uh, we just had a great UK casting director, Carmel Cochran and, and Anya was the first person on tape but she was a former model, and I was kind of suspicious. Uh, but um, you know, when 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 uh, when I saw her in person, was working with her in person, it was clear that you know um, she she would never be able to be to survive in Puritan uh, society, um, which made her a good choice. And 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 she also uh, you know is extremely facile with with the language. Uh, but and <clears throat> she's extremely en enigmatic. Like you, you know, you, you, I can stick my lens like right up inside her, up in her grill, and you, <laughs> you, you, you want to know what she's thinking, but you can't uh, figure it out, which was very crucial for the character. I, I read I, that your background is in theater. Is that right? Yes, uh, and I know yours is as well. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I started in theater, and uh, I was like designing and directing uh, stuff off, 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 off. Uh, you know. What kind of shows did you do? Uh, I mean, I did Shakespeare and uh, and, um, and and other classical stuff. I mean, the 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 thing that I'm the most proud of was a, a street theater version of Faust that combined Goethe and Marlowe and some uh, puppet traditions uh, from the 19th century, and it was pretty weird. <laughs> when you when you started working with the actors, did you rehearse with them? Yeah, we really had to. I mean, first of all, we had to get the the that the the, the trust, and we had to build a family so that we could tear the family apart. Um, but uh, but additionally, we had a twenty five day shoot, which for you know our budget was 
it, great. But for uh, what I was trying to do was was very very tight, sure. and uh, and we had like this super specific blueprint of the camera work. It was almost cut in camera. So people, you know, so that so everyone, but you know, before we started rolling, they need to know this is how you milk a goat. This is how you use a bill hook. <laughs> this is your way around the farmhouse, and and and, and also just the blocking in, in general. So yeah, we we rehearsed. Um, it really shows. I mean, I think the you know the the acting in this is. I always I always say that good acting is the best special effect. You're you're right. <laughs> <laughs> and and in this, it's like you really do get this sense of uh, just this growing dread, this sense of you know uh, something is terribly wrong here, and um, and it's all really the actors who are who are doing the, the heavy lifting here. Oh yeah, I mean they're they're really they're really incredible. Um, I see some of them creeping in. Well, let's bring them up. Let's bring them up on stage. Yeah, let's yeah. do it. Please. Uh, so uh, he, Kate Dickey plays Catherine. You'll notice she's not from Yorkshire. And, yeah. uh, and uh, Ralph Einson, uh, William. <laughs> Please sit down. Nice and sweet, yeah. Yeah, fantastic work. Anya's on her She's just the toilet. Oh. <laughs> you want to sit down? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> Any, do you want to sort of tell us what it was like making this movie? Well, <laughs> it was pretty intense. Um, Ralph and I lost a lot of weight for it, so it was physically quite um, difficult. And um, the kind of only way we could really do it justice was to um, go for it 100%. Um, and try and make your beautiful script come to life um so it was fun though as well and it was fun we had a laugh actually <laughs> believe it or not we did have fun in between the takes we did i mean it was very uh, it was very intense we were sort of six weeks in all in uh, northern ontario a place called matua um, all staying in this one tiny hotel like a seven room hotel uh, <laughs> all living on top of each other with the kids um but i think that that helped to, to build it up. I think that a film like this, you had to uh, had to make that relationship believable with the family, uh, so the audience can invest in that. So it actually means something when it all starts to go to shit. And, uh, and we got a week's rehearsals, which was a luxury. So we spent a week kind of hanging out and building the family to then sort of crash it apart, really. But can you tell we've luxury. rehearsed our lines? <laughs> <laughs> Have you said that as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hello. You? I've not done any interviews. Oh, really? No. Oh, wow. Hello. Hi, Great sorry. work. Anya. This Hi. is Anya Taylor Joy. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well. Hi. <laughs> so it, it looks like it was very cold where you were shooting, wasn't it? Was it? It's it was very cold at the start, yeah. It yeah, started yeah. off really cold, but by the end, uh, the black flies had come out and it started to get really hot. And those wooden, we, uh, we, uh, wooden uh, we, costumes we, were very hot. Yeah, we we originally thought we were going to be shooting in, in March, using March for November, but the snow was still up to my testicles in March. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> uh, but, uh, well, you know, hi. Uh, <laughs> and, and so we, we kept pushing. Uh, and then we had a very limited window when it looked like November. And so basically we were pulling buds off the trees like all the time and pulling green grass out all the time to try to, you know, <clears throat> keep it looking gloomy. It does look gloomy. It really does. <laughs> um, and rough. It looks like it's a hard life. I mean, that's and, – and I, it's funny. Watching it the second time, I was picking up on things. I mean, one of the things that knocked me out was when you say to your father, you know, you can't hunt, you're, you're a terrible farmer, you know, it's like, what are we going to do, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think that – thank you. Um, just every day was such a struggle. Like, everything was so complicated all the time, and especially, I mean – obviously for everybody, but definitely for women, you know, it was really, really difficult. And so I love that scene, actually. It was in the 17th century. This is true. In the 17th century. Um, not, not on the shoot. We not on the shoot. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I meant for the Puritans, not for us. We were great. Um, but actually, it's really funny. So we did that scene um, in our audition, and we didn't really change anything when we actually shot it. 
it just kind of it it worked out. It was great. There's a, a great book I read a, a, a couple of years ago called Mayflower. I don't know if you've read this, mm -hmm. but it's about the you know the pilgrims and the first Thanksgiving and so forth, and it it just gives you this sense, and this movie really captures it, of how tough it was, you know, just to survive, you know, and um, and I love the scene where you say, I want to go home, and he's saying, well, what, back to the colony? No, no, yeah. <laughs> let's go back to... I mean, by the time you meet the family, I mean, we talked a lot about all the love that would have been there before you met them, because in England, we feel that Catherine and William had a real love story, but by the time you meet them, they're, he's already kind of taken them across the world, away from everything, and then, you know, then we get banished from the plantation, and then the baby goes missing. It's <coughs> not the happiest time of their marriage. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I mean, they've had they've had a proper life in in yeah. England, uh, a house with glass in the windows, and and these kind of uh, luxuries, as it were, and yeah, they've been taken to a. To quite a place by the time we find them in the script, especially six months after the start, uh, yeah. you know, when things have continually gone so wrong. Well, my wife was, you know, wondering about, you know, you know, you we see the scene of you coming to the, I guess it's the, the meadow where the where the, you're going to build <clears throat> the house. So the, you know, the scene we don't see is you you actually building these houses, you know, uh, which must have been, I mean. I mean, the building of the, of the farmstead is not in there. Uh, I will say that the house is um, a bit too big uh, than would be accurate, uh, but uh, we had to make it a little larger to, to film in. Uh, also, there's a bit too many windows, but we need to light them. The windows are a little too large, but we needed to have that natural light. Um, you know, Also, the garret th th where the children are, they probably wouldn't have bothered with, with one of those because there would have been a tremendous amount of labor to saw the yeah, yeah. planks or to or the tremendous amount of money to buy them from a fr frontier lumber mill. Uh, but um, <clears throat> I wanted to have that Hansel and Gretel moment of the parents uh, overhearing their children. And certainly those kinds of Garrett's existed, but uh, pro not this family probably would not have bothered. Well, the, the thing you're talking about with windows, you know, there's a f you mentioned that you had went visited S or Salem. Massachusetts, um, you know, which is of course where all the witch trials took place, and there's a house there that's called the Witch House, mm -hmm. and um, I had seen, you know, when I was working on this movie, um, From Beyond, there's a, I, I wanted a creepy looking house, and I looked at a picture of the Witch House, and I said, that should be the house, <laughs> and I um, had them, you know, they they built a half scale version of it for the movie, um, and I based on the size of the windows, you know, to kind of give a sense of. You know, we know a window. You know what the dimensions are, and um, I, a few years later, I went to Salem and visited the witch house and discovered that it was actually the same size as the half scale house that we had made, <laughs> yeah. because because the windows were like six inches, you know, by yeah. six inches, yeah. uh, because like you say, glass was almost impossible to get there. And, and also, like they also, you know, they wanted to keep things out. It wasn't about like look at the great view. It was like keep everything out. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, but uh, you know, capturing That's just cool. that, that life. Um, well, yeah, I mean, like a, a lot of you know experienced farmers came over here and they really didn't know what they were doing because uh, the land had been cultivated for generations in England, but but uh, they were you know turning over new soil here. I mean, you see all these uh, shoddy you know stone walls all over new england and and the, every one of those stones was a farmer saying oh god i gotta get these out of the ground yeah 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 now the movie is opening in a in a, a week right yeah uh february 19th yeah and um it's gonna be playing across the country i'm assuming yeah yes. it's uh everywhere oh good <laughs> yeah that's good and uh, do you have a next project that you're working on uh yeah i'm working on a medieval epic right now Wow, can you tell us more about it? Not much. Uh, no. <laughs> it's uh, but um, you know, it's it's called the night. Okay, with a K. With a K. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, but I'll just say that you know, uh, I have um, a shelf and a half on one bookcase full of witch books, and I have an entire bookcase devoted to the night research. So I'll say that. Uh, will it involve the supernatural? Uh, I hope so. Oh, all right. Okay, good. 
Well, thank you all very much. This has been wonderful. It was great to yeah. meet you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Good pleasure. This is Nick Dawson from Talk House Film, and you've been listening to Stuart Gordon and Robert Eggers on the Talk House Film podcast. This episode was engineered by Derek Olds and edited by Elia Einhorn. For more filmmakers talking film and TV, visit the talkhouse.com slash film. Subscribe to Talk House Film and Talk House Music Podcasts on iTunes, where you can find all our previous episodes. And while you're there, please rate and review if you can.